listening to the Unshackle Your Life podcast with Debbie Colburn, where breakthroughs happen, getting rid of all the hidden things that hold us back, things that scare us and challenge us, and things that we're just plain fed up with. We talk all things money and business, big and small. We dive deep. We get real and raw at discovering and exploring what is really possible for you and what's holding you back. If you've ever thought, It's not enough when you looked at your bank account or your credit card balance. Maybe you're sick and tired of the endless struggle of just getting by. And you know you're missing out on opportunities that keep screaming out to you. It's a never-ending cycle of crisis to crisis, either in your personal life or your business or your relationships or all of them. Then this is exactly where you need to be. We'll bring you a whole new way to look at those challenges, share ideas, tips, and tactics, and get you connected to the resources that will unlock those golden handcuffs and release your unique abilities. No matter what's going on in your life, right now, maybe you're in survival mode, living day to day, paycheck to paycheck, or maybe things are good and you know they could be better. Maybe you're in a job or a career or running a business that is leaving you empty, depleted, uninspired, or anything in between, I've got your back. Ready? Buckle up, take a deep breath, and join me in a conversation about breaking through to the next level. This week's podcast is a little bit different because I really wanted each of you to be here with me so that we could chat face to face, but clearly we can't right now. Who really wants to be on another cancelled or delayed flight and then not be able to rent a car when you get there? Glitches of summer 2022. Oh my gosh, guys, after our Canadian passport office sorts out its delays and delays and delays, because my passport expires in December of this year, I am so excited for traveling in the fall and in early 2023. So I've decided to visualize 100 of you seated at round tables, iPads and notebooks at at the ready, and my plan is to try and address your three biggest problems and highlight a few of the mistakes that some of you might be making when it comes to money and business. And somehow be that breath of fresh air that people are desperately searching for in this tumultuous time. An anchor and a lighthouse, all at the same time. Here's the thing about everything that I've learned, what makes my life and business what it is today and what it will be in the years to come. I didn't know when I sat down on the floor floor of my dog Diaz's canine physiotherapist's office holding the dog as she got acupuncture needles in the oddest places that one question that day would change my life forever. See, when Carrie asked me if I was interested in an online business that was growing and expanding globally, that I didn't need to fork out any money really to get started, there were three things she didn't know about me. One, that my current business, The Summit, was hemorrhaging money despite being in high demand and consistently fully booked. Two, that I was maxing out my credit card about every two weeks and I was in $100,000 worth of debt. Not credit card debt, just debt. And three, that I was living in a 320 square foot converted horse stable with no running water, no bathroom, no kitchen and a tiny space heater to keep it warm and working 80 to 90 hours at a minimum every week. She did know that I was driving a 1997 Toyota 4Runner with a smashed in front fender though. She didn't know that I had a big dream, something that I had had in my mind since my mid twenties. I always dreamed of having a remote business, one that didn't rely on me as the sole source of revenue, that I could work from anywhere in the world, one 100% on my own schedule, with no one telling me what I need to do and when I need to do it, with lots and lots and lots of time away to travel. That was the 18th of July, 2014, 
almost eight years ago today. I had no idea how I could get to that place. I had struggled with money all my life, even as a well-paid, successful professional accountant. Get it? Then it's gone. Try saving and investing in some crisis would cause me to raid those funds. The queen of self-sabotage. Yet, I believed that I could figure it out, that each little step I took was heading the right direction. One day I committed to creating this podcast. For a year, I'd followed people like Lewis Howes of the School of Greatness, John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneurs on Fire, and Rich Roll of the Rich Roll Podcast, who were already at 700 to 1,000 episodes, watching and trying to figure out a format that both you, my listeners, and I would love. I had almost everything ready to go, probably 90% of it, or more. And guess what I did? Yeah. I sat on the idea for a full year, a full 365 days, stuck, unable to let myself be visible or my voice be heard, ignoring each and every one of you and what you were asking for help with. Scared that even with my education and my business experience, I wasn't going to be good enough. I wasn't going to be enough, impactful enough, that what I released wouldn't be the quality of Lewis or JLD or Rich. Really? Debbie? Now, I'm pretty damn sure that there's a whole bunch of you that are doing just that when it comes to changing your money story. And entrepreneurs, something in your business. It might even be the cash situation. And I learned that trying to copy exactly what someone else said they did absolutely wasn't the magic pill. That taking what resonated with me, testing it out, keeping what worked and tossing what didn't, as well as constantly going back to those funky little notebooks you've all heard me talk about and you've seen me use in my videos and scanning back for the next nugget to jump off the page to me. As I've learned to let the universe be my master guide, that was the path to my dream, my unique path. And why am I telling you this? Because my friends, I know you're scared as shit right now, watching your money evaporate faster every day. The pandemic was brutal. No, eye-opening, revelatory. For most people, their worries about having enough is consuming their brain power 24-7 every single day right now as we exit that pandemic. How are we going to survive? It feels like everything is out of reach. Unretire? Oh my God, we might have to. Each day, you are bombarded with the same thoughts. I'm going to lose my job. How is my business going to survive? What if even just one piece of my income shrinks or disappears? The future, your future, your kids' and your grandkids' futures, your employees' futures. How are we we going to be able to create that rich life when interest rates are going up, the cost of living is going up, the cost of gas is going up through the roof. We're already financially stressed and stretched super thin. It feels like everything we have is at risk, out of control. That's how I'm feeling every day. I know, guys. And it just seems that, as the saying goes, well, that happened fast. The world opened up after 20 months of uncertainty where we had stable prices. And now, well, I got you. I've been through this before. As Ray Dalio calls it, it's just another one of these. When I bought my very first car, brand new car, a 1980 Dodge Colt, the interest rates were 16%. For the last few years, we've been at just over 0%, and now you're freaking out because it might be 5%. And everyone opted for variable rates because they weren't really variable until now. My first house, a small cabin thingy on a lake, was at a similar rate to the car. Okay, okay. 
no more doom and gloom. To have your rich life, your perfect life, your dream life, there are three things that you must lean into to thrive. Your element, your environment, and your energy. So stop reading and listening to doom and gloom. I know I just gave you a little bit, but that's it. Doom and gloom, media, friends and family, anything. Now you know what it looks like and sounds like. Cut that crap out of your life. You are not going to die if you don't check CNN in the morning. You are not going to die if, you're, if news is not on the radio in the morning as you're trying to eat that rushed breakfast. If you are a stay-at-home dad and you love it, that's your element. If you don't, then try something else. If you're a pro golfer and you're pretty damn good at it, don't try and be a swimmer. If you're an entrepreneur, but your today's business is leaving you flat, consider a different element. Maybe it's just a different business model. Then look for people who are thriving right now. And believe me, guys, there are lots of them. And they aren't the ones that are making the zillions of dollars or the unicorns or the unsavory greedy ones. They are right in your city, in your socials, all around you. You just have to be open because they talk differently. Curate your environment. And so this presentation, this video podcast is my gift to you to help you find the space the headspace to create what I'm calling your alive life. I do not have all the answers and solutions for you, but what I do have is connections, access to resources, experiences, frameworks, a community of thinkers. This episode is designed to guide you from a constant state of money worries to a place where you are no longer obsessing over the cost of everything, especially the little shit, where you are in control, have a plan, no matter how big or how tiny it is. And you know exactly what to do and what that feeling, when you get it, will give you. Right now, Imagine that you are at the most amazing barbecue hosted by your incredible friends. The meats and the fresh veggies are all there, perfect and screaming out, eat me. The drinks are of all sorts are lying in the ice cooler, droplets of water glistening off the sides of the bottles and cans and dessert. <gasps> mm, you just can't wait. And over there, on the side of their fabulous deck is the grill. The king or the queen of it, ready to create a spectacular bed of fire and coals to put that meat and the veggies on. But no matter what they try, the barbecue simply will not catch and stay lit. There is advice being tossed at them from all directions, ridicule about their ridiculous grilling ability, taunts about starving friends. Isn't this what your money life feels like? Just trying the same stuff over and over and nothing seems to work. And after a while, it be it's become a nonstop cycle of start, stop, start, stop, and momentum never catches, just like the barbecue. And then someone walks up with a small handful of very dry twigs and some hay and just a little accelerant, a.k.a. gas. And as if they are the fire wizard, now the coals start to glow red around the cor on the corners and the much needed little breeze picks up. If you've ever watched an episode of any season of Survivor, you will know that getting fire is the number one element to surviving and thriving. So what is blocking your fire? Yep, money. It's just that simple. My friends, there will 
always be enough money and resources in your life for your rich, perfect dream life. When you choose the best messages, framing your greatest desires, what you want for you and for your family running in your head, what would it feel like? How do you find that feeling when you haven't done that thing before or had that thing? Questions I've asked myself again and again. And questions I know some of you are asking right now. What would it feel like like to money-proof your life? You know, I'm not here to, to spin false hope for you, don't you? I'm just not that person. The journey you are on from this place where no matter what your current family income is, is haunted by this secret fear that your family and your business will run out of money. You fear this in the short term and for the years down the road. And maybe even unretiring has popped into your head. Parents moving in with you? Oh my God, that is not going to happen. Maybe bored and stuck are words you use to describe where you are. The purgatory of the mundane, as Lisa Bilyeu calls it, a.k.a. bored as shit. The journey to that place where life really works is a path through obstacles, issues, failures, and wins. Lots and lots of wins of all sizes. One tiny step followed by another. Not a straight line, but a wandering, beautiful excursion through life. And at the end, and as you move through, you are seeing life through a new lens with a different perspective. Living the alive life through a lens that isn't clouded by limiting beliefs about money, old stories that don't serve you, that you inherited from your past, and with a new appreciation for the abundance available in the world for you, your family, your business, and your business's family. So many people believe that there is just one path for everyone. There isn't. No one else in the world will have your exact path. That's why I call myself a guide, because sometimes the path on the map has a section that is flooded out, or it's just too damn slippery to go the main way, and you need to make a detour through the bush to get to where you're going. On this path to a place where worries about money no longer are giving you sleepless nights, sometimes one step is so small, you barely realize you're doing it or that you've even done it. It's a path that needs repetition, one step over and over, one new habit, one changed behavior until it's your new normal and you no longer have to think about it. There is a requirement for discipline, yeah, a re reasonable amount of discipline. Working to improve a step until it's strong enough to support the next move, the next step. And understanding that most times you are building parallel pillars, three to five, so you have an unbreakable foundation and levels above that as you grow and learn and discover more. No matter where you are, every project, every path you start on, every reinvention in your life, nothing is ever going to feel complete, 100% complete. Nothing is ever perfect. You will always have a feeling that you could have done better. That's human nature. Ever said, I wish I'd done or not done something in relation to a money decision in your past? We all have. You are not alone on that one. Holding yourself back, procrastinating, thinking if it's not going to be perfect, it's not worth doing, is a cardinal sin. As we walk along this path together, because guys, I'm still in this process. We are always in it. We need to remember that nothing is ever perfect. You can always go back later and tweak it, like I'm doing with the Fit Body Fit Mind dog over a year later. You can simply let it go. Embrace every moment. Moment reminds me of this every single day. It's important to appreciate the ebbs and flows 
of each day because there will be days that are astronomically high and days where it's you're, you're, you've hit rock bottom and every permutation in between. It's like that thing you saw in high school where you've got this, the waves going up and down. And lastly, get out of your false bubble of reality. What is your truth? Own that. If you simply do your best to be the best that you can be, you will wake up one day and realize that you have become excellent at that thing. Embrace the process of mastering your craft, of mastering a process, of mastering the thing. And we're here today to take steps to master our money. What do you really want? What does your life look like when it really works? What does your business look like when it really works? What if you could feel less lonely, less alone? What if you could do something and it would make things a little easier for someone else and you could get paid for it? Write these questions down. Pause this right now. And before you go to bed today, take 10 minutes and start answering those. Can you keep an open mind? Be willing to feel your judgment and then simply put it in a box, close the lid, lock it up and listen. Over the past two months on the podcast, you've learned how to spot and interpret your self-sabotages and any patterns or habits that are not helping you move forward. And how to use the three S's process. You remember, stop, start, stop, then start. Then you learned how important it is to know and optimize the times when you know with absolute certainty <clears throat> that your energy is in, I am going to rock this mode. How to harness your courage and laser focus that courage and why, just like we said to our kids, words matter. Then you faced reality, the reality of being an under earner, plus some pricing tips. So you're all ready to transform everything related to your money worries, right? Next week, just like those money gurus on in the Facebook and the Insta and the Google ads promise, you are going to instantly be able to make $10,000 in 10 days, have a 10,000 K month for the first time, know exactly how to become a millionaire in a year working 10 hours or less a week and do that. That'll be you next week. You are never going to worry about money again. Ah, uh, hell no. Can you hear that bubble burst? Why? Because we know that making more money won't solve your money issues if you are not putting in the time to change your relationship with your money. You would never treat your best friend the way you treat your money. You would never treat your closest family member like you treat your money. Your thinking, the hidden stuff, the unfortunate gifts you inherited from your family and the life experiences that you didn't even know you had that are hijacking your money thinking. Does any of this sound like you? I use my business as a personal, as my personal piggy bank. I depend on my business to bail me out anytime we're short personally. I'm not paying myself properly or at all, and I'm starting to resent putting time into the business or my job. I'm always listening to my family and friends' advice on business as if it was gospel, even though they have no hands-on profitable business experience, they don't have the money the money and the, and the, and the things that, that I want. Even my partner keeps giving me a damn ultimatum, make it work or else. Getting the basics in place gives you space in life to lean into your ikigai, your reason for living. Ikigai needs space to work. It needs a money foundation. 
Imagine that the three S's could get you what you want. Choose one, two, or all three, and watch things shift positively. Stop. Stop relying on outdated methods, budgets, listening to friends and family, buying courses, that kind of stuff. Looking for tactics. Start. Start taking a new step or a new action each week, even every day. There is no right time frame or frequency. Or three, stop and start. Stop reciting old limiting beliefs and start crafting your own stories, beliefs, and future. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? Just pick one thing right now that you're going to do or not do. Every one of you can do that, can't you? Are you going to be the one person who listens to this and doesn't do anything? Oh my gosh, I hope not. Here's what I've learned in my journey. Anything is possible. The longer the runway, the greater the possibilities are if you keep moving forward. The longer runway always trumps a trend win when it comes to sustaining profitability, longevity, and happiness. What you are looking for almost always needs you to embrace your softer side. Yes, guys, I'm talking to you. And yes, ladies, I'm talking to those of you who have been called bitchy, pushy, and that type of thing in your past. It needs a constant balancing act of the softer side and the hustle grind and long hours. It's not an either or equation. In order to have an extraordinary life or an extraordinary business, there will be many areas where you are just simply average. And that's 100% okay. And there will be one or two areas where you are mind-bogglingly, unbelievably extraordinary. And those may come through may change through the seasons of your life, or they may not. Most of us will not be in the 1%, the unicorns, the Nelson Mandela's, the Warren Buffett's, the Martha Stewart's of the world, but your voice matters. When I embraced the fact that future me, that vision was all of me, plus tiny incremental steps forward, it was my past, every mistake, every bad choice, misjudgment, successes, people in my life, and those not no longer there, my career, my education, dogs, kids, everything, every single atom plays a part. When I got that, it no longer felt like the albatross that I was trying to drag with me everywhere because they, it, somehow had given meaning to my life. I gave it that power, and then I took that shit back. I took my power back. What would it feel like to never have to worry about money again? Having enough to do what you want, when you want, whenever you want with whomever you want, for whomever you want. When you blend the world of woo-woo and the softer side, the feminine side, the yin to the yang, with the essential tactics and strategy and financial knowledge, you have the home of the magic elixir to all your money worries. It's simply being kind to yourself, always. It's being disciplined and accountable, always. And it's commitment, being committed to the process and to the outcome, always and forever. I know that right now, you are working all the time in your business or on your career and that's leaving you guilty not being there for those who need you and that might even be yourself working all the time in your money mindset maybe even obsessing because you feel time counting down and you've got to dig yourself out of this hole figure this shit out yet you somehow know 
that it's self-destructive, and that giving it more space, while counterintuitive, is the right thing to do. And be more committed than ever to finding the solution. Consider, what if the key is in fact having multiple diverse, emotionally impactful, rewarding things on the side, activities, sports, hobbies, even a side gig, even a paying side gig, a second one? And what if your lack of financial resources is keeping you there, restricting your ability to see outside of the mundane? even to the point of not being able to see that it isn't the lack of resource, financial resources, but you're thinking about it, that is keeping you struggling to keep your head ab above water, trying desperately not to drown. And what if you're feeling guilty because you think you should feel grateful? Everybody in the self-development world is screaming gratitude, 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 and you've tried it. And you do feel grateful, but you want more for you. Is it selfish? Are you beating yourself up for that? Is toxic gratefulness really a thing? Can't you be content exactly where you are with all you are? already have as a starting point. This is what happy really is. Happiness is just one of hundreds of emotions that each of us can choose. As the Japanese wabi-sabi philosophy teaches, to be content with what you have and where you are is to be grateful. To be content with what you have and where you are while working towards what you want and fully trusting that you can achieve it is to be intentional. And through gratitude, intention, and action, you find happiness. Isn't that what you're looking for? The three keys, gratitude, intention, and action. That's exactly what we coach, teach, talk, speak, demonstrate on. We're probably not using words or scenarios that remotely resemble what they were talking about. Tailoring our sentences with a money focus, we are faced with problems like a money income that's unpredictable, inconsistent, maybe even at risk. And when it finally does come in, it vanishes in days, right back out the door to bills. We've got no system in place, and what we have, if anything, simply isn't sustainable. There's no effing way that this budgeting crap is going to work for me, and spreadsheets, well, holy F, how do people deal with this? Or the endless loop, loop of money worry, cycling over and over in our heads, like the digital banner on Wall Street. How much do we have? What's in the bank? How much credit do I have left on my card? Which card can I use? No matter what we do, we can't seem to get ahead. Always wrapped up with, if only we had more money, then we could buy the things we need and want. No matter what your family take-home income is, people in the $250,000 plus a year range really struggle with this. It's a universal problem. Say this, put it on a post-it note on the bathroom mirror. There is always enough money and resources in my life when I choose the most empowering thoughts about what I want. When you understand the options, then you can see a potential solution and pick it. Solving your financial problems is just that simple. And there are two options that start every single journey to your alive life. Whether you are employed or self-employed. Option one, decide and commit to make a change in your situation today. Or option two, do nothing. That's it. Can you do that right now? Type I'm in in the comments. 
It's so easy to get overwhelmed with the information. That's the unintended consequence of today's internet. So much information, free and paid, good, great, bad, really bad. As I'm writing this, I'm listening to Moments of Love from The Art of Noise, one of my favorite jazz albums. You know the routine. The instant you Google something, you're slammed in the face with ads from all directions, courtesy of the algorithms. So how do you discover the right thing for your business or how to make more money when people in the money space are talking about budgeting, investing, saving, profit, scarcity mindset, recession, interest rates, financial advice, cutting costs, cost of living, inflation, living below your means, thinking like a billionaire, the wealth gap, Ponzi schemes, passive income, hustle and work harder, work smarter, pricing, income diversification, jobs versus entrepreneurship, mass manifestation, law of attraction, spreadsheets, fire affiliates, holy shit. No wonder it's just easiest to ignore it. Are you confused? Already tuning it all out? Why is it so damn complicated? I've got a professional accountant, entrepreneur head. I honestly cannot imagine what this all sounds like to you. And that's why I hope I c you can find one little step that makes sense to you to move forward. It's why I created the Breakthrough Navigator programs, because I've been in your shoes. I can give you all the tactics and the strategies, but the real barrier and the solution lies in your head, regardless of how much TNS you keep pounding in there on top. Find the state of simplicity your SOS, your eternal life preserver, a step that you can keep coming back to. It's as simple as naming or renaming one bank account like seven days on a beach or writing the due dates of your bills for the next 30 days in a planner, planning tonight's dinner in five minutes this morning, going on Amazon and buying that new pack of underwear. Damn, it needed an upgrade. Writing the discount you got in a tracking journal somewhere, even if you didn't ask for the discount or just on a page in your planner. Then experiment and track. Focus on just one thing. What happens after 15 days of tracking every discount, every money that comes into your life? Is anything changing in how you think about money and abundance? Millions of people think there are universal steps to magically find your financial freedom that simple, that simple mistruth keeps them stuck. You've learned over the past seven episodes that there are specific things that keep your money flow blocked. And you've learned how to unblock them, to unblock that flow, and to keep that sparkling, emerald green, glacial river flowing and growing. <clears throat> Life is perfectly imperfect. There is beauty and imperfection. There is space to be 1% better in every single choice. Appreciating simplicity is a skill that opens doors and makes everything easier. Acceptance of the ever-evolving and changing world of nature, of all things, frees us from unrealistic unreal expectations. And as I say over and over in both words and in pictures, I know you get this because you are my peeps. Make space for beauty and nature in your life. Where is your North Star? What is the next goal? What is your a bit further out goal? What is the next step for you? You've got you steps and then you've got tactics and strategies. Get yourself to neutral thinking about your money and about your financial situation. Nothing is positive and nothing is negative. It is simply a fact. When you can feel that in your body, you have made astronomical progress. Calm your nervous system. If you are triggered by anything related directly or indirectly to money, there is disruption and anxiety in your system. Meditate, journal, walk, dance, whatever your spiritual practice is. Don't get hung up on that Zen thing. It's whatever helps calm 
your nervous system. What is the one tiny thing you could do to move you towards your when life works in any area? Are you ready for the next steps? You've got all the pieces you need to start in here and in episodes 99 to 105. And then after this, I've got two more follow-ups, 107 and 108, more tactical than soft stuff. Have you done any of the exercises in the, in the, the podcasts? If not, head back and pick one. Your family's money story doesn't have to be yours or your family's. And today is where you start changing that by writing down one money phrase that you heard as you were growing up. Just one. Is it true? Or is it false? Can you prove it either way? Try that. Give it a try. Because you are going to be blown away when you realize that most of what you heard is horse crap. There is someone out there probably hundreds of thousands of people who have proven it to be false. If it's true, yahoo, keep that one. If you think it's true, but your results are not where you want them to be, then it's likely false. People out there are depending on you to make your business sing. They are depending on you to get your shit together. So as I wrap up this powerful episode, please remember these three things. When you are giving and finding meaning and joy in each and every day, you cut the cords to needing a specific amount of money to do that. But you are still in pursuit, working towards abundance freedom. What you choose to do, how you build your alive life, doesn't have to be noble. Like the people we class as the 1%, the unicorns. It is your life and it is in your DNA. It is your DNA. And when you appreciate the everyday moments, you discover and curate your own personal ikigai. Every day, I am reminded that icky means alive. Alive to me truly means living in the moment. Hey, if this podcast got you thinking you're ready to improve your money or business situation or both, please make sure you're subscribed and share it with everyone you think needs to hear this. The link is in the show notes and drop a review in wherever you're listening. Make sure to check out the all-new Breakthrough Navigator, the money and the money in business editions, where you can work directly with me to transform that money situation in your bank accounts that is keeping you up at night. It's super easy. Just head to our website at debbiecolburn.com forward slash links. And while you're there, sign up to grab your very own free personal daily intention setter in your inbox every single day for 90 days absolutely free i actually get them sent to myself they are so friggin amazing simple tools to transform both your personal life and your business